Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Sorry, I'm about five minutes late. <laughs> I hope you have your cup of coffee or tea or water or whatever it is that you enjoy drinking. Please let me know if you are here with me. Um, send me a comment or make sure that you click on the link above so that Facebook and also the StreamYard can connect the two. Um, so I know who's on with me. Otherwise, I won't know who you are if you say hello. So please. Um, today is going to be a little bit different. I um, Let's see. Let me just take a deep breath. I was very stirred up through the evening. I didn't sleep very well. And um, because of just all the sadness going on in the world, and I was just so, and I wasn't sad about what was happening per se, not that I'm not sad about what's happening, don't get me wrong. It is terrible what is happening right now. I was feeling stirred up because of, my brothers and sisters that are getting caught up in it and um, and that they're choosing to get caught up on it because it's a choice. It is a choice that we make, isn't it? And, and that's kind of what was stirring me up. So when I woke up this morning, our wonderful father, of course, um, put in my heart to share something with you. So it's going to be a little bit different. It's not going to be from the devotional Bible that I usually um use but it was so interesting that when i went to this new i actually have this new devotion that i started reading it's called grace laced if you have any interest at all by ruth Chu simons um she is an artist as well and so i started reading it so it's of course of course so i the first the the devotion was about sufficient i'm like wow lord how sufficient is that, <laughs> you know? Um, and the scripture that was shared was from 2 Corinthians 12, 9, that my grace is sufficient for you, for power is perfected in weakness. And so as I kept reading on through it, I, mean, I just kept just, God just kept putting other things in my heart. Um, so that is something that I'm going to be sharing with you guys this morning. So I hope everyone is having a beautiful morning and a beautiful start to your day. It is beautiful here up here in Connecticut, gorgeous blue skies, but it's cold. <laughs> it's definitely cold, but it's definitely gorgeous out. So let me just start us off with a prayer. Heavenly Father, Abba, Lord, thank you for a new day. We always have something to look forward to, and that's a new morning with new mercies and a new day, Lord. That is something that we always have to look forward to. Thank you that I'm healthy and that I'm alive, Lord. Thank you that we are healthy and we are alive. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, help us to stay focused on what is sufficient. Thank you for being all that we need, Lord. Lord, thank you for being sufficient in grace. Thank you for being sufficient in love, sufficient in peace, sufficient in our finances, sufficient in our health, our comfort. Thank you for just being sufficient, Lord. Thank you. Thank you that we have a choice to make. Thank you that we have that choice. To make the right choices and we have the opportunity to choose joy over darkness Lord to choose light over darkness father thank you for being in control Lord and then father ask for many blessings on everyone that is watching and many blessings on anyone that will be watching Lord Blessings on their lives and their families. Blessings in their heart. Blessings on their finances, their home, their family, their children, Lord. 
Help them to stay focused on truth and to stay focused on you, Lord. To stay focused on what is sufficient. In the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Woo! If you have hopped on, please say hello and tell me who you are. As I said before, prayer, um, this is going to be a little bit different because God put something a little bit different in my heart. Good morning, Sherry Lynn. And um, as I said, you know, I woke up this morning feeling a little stirred up, not anxious, just stirred up. I was, you know, very stirred up. My emotions were stirred up this morning because, I, you know, I didn't sleep through the night very well. And but he definitely wanted me to talk to you guys about this and about how his grace is sufficient. It is. It is sufficient. So there's a couple different things that I want to read for you. I already read to you um, 2 Corinthians 12, 9. I'm going to also read to you um, 1 Corinthians 2, 5. So again, that's 1 Corinthians Two five, if you would like to join me. <sighs> okay, so um, I'm actually going to read one through five. And when I came to you, brothers did not proclaiming to you the testimony of God with lofty speech or wisdom. For I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and much trembling. And my speech and my message were not in plausible words of wisdom, but in the demonstration of the spirit and of the power so that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. And I'm going to read that to you again. So that your faith may not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Amen to that. Amen. Whew. Just that scripture alone. <laughs> Just that scripture alone this morning spoke to me. Wait till I read the next one for you. <laughs> So, um, oh gosh, you know, the wisdom of men and the power of God, it's just a mere intellectual persuasion that does not save people. Saving faith is produced by the heart changing power of the Holy Spirit as the gospel is proclaimed. Yes. Think about that. Good morning, Susanna. I'm going to read to you um, this little devotion in this Bible. I actually have, um, it's called the Women's Study Bible, and it's um, the English Standard Version. And it does have um, some devotions in it as well. And I actually just started using it this year for the first time. So, um, and this one is called Wisdom Does Not Come From the Web. And it's from 1 Corinthians 2. We live in an age of information overload. And I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I'm going to read some, some, main, some of the key points here. With the press of a button, we can access more data than the world has ever had before. Isn't that true? Oh, that is so true. But are we wiser? Are we more confused with possibilities? More opinionated with fact or truth? And more disconnected from our world? from our creator and from each other. To be wiser would be to act on increasing understanding of who we are, why we exist and what we should be doing, all in the light of... Sorry, I know I froze. <laughs> all in the light of creation and eternity. Facts without faith do not provide identity, meaning, or purpose. True wisdom involves the knowledgeable and love guided practice of godly living. It is very different from society's wisdom and is foolish to others since its focus is Jesus, since its focus is Jesus Christ. Wisdom is a gift from the Holy Spirit 
who helps us gain God's perspective and empowers us to act on it. Mm. Though we may gain information through media and the internet, we do not gain wisdom. I'm going to repeat that. Though we may gain information through the media and the internet, we do not gain wisdom. Nor does wisdom come from celebrities or people of status with eloquent motivational speaking skills. Sometimes even teachers and church, church leaders and pastors. Perhaps following the culture to be entertaining, witty, and attractive, as if those qualities would guarantee our learning. We need Paul's correction as much as the Corinthian believers did. And these are some questions that we need to ask ourselves. We are led to ask, does my identity come from magazines, newspapers, social media, and others' opinions, or from the prayerful consideration of what scripture says is true of me? Do my hopes and fears fluctuate with newscasts? Or do I gain assurance from God's promises? Guys, this was so needed this morning. Do I imitate the lifestyles of neighbors and TV characters more than the godly responses of people in the Bible narratives? Wow. Do I make sense of life more from novels and movies than I do from God's true story of creation, rebellion, redemption, and restoration? Hmm. Such questions point us back to scripture and challenge our pride so that our faith might not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. And again, that was from 1 Corinthians 2, 5. Wow. <laughs> okay, I'm not going further. No. That was so powerful, but I need to read this other scripture to you guys this morning. Good morning, Miss Amy. Yes, amen, girl. Amen. Because this is another powerful scripture for you to, to remind yourselves of this morning. The whole armor of God. This is about the whole armor of God. Finally, and again, and I apologize. This is from Ephesians, Ephesians 6. And it's verse, I'm going to read verses 10 through 20. Ephesians 6, verses 10 through 20. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you might be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand firm. Stand, therefore, having fastened in the belt of truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying at all times in this, in this spirit with all prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints, and also for me, that words may be given to me in opening my mouth boldly to proclaim the mystery of the gospel. Yes, proclaim the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains, that I may declare it boldly as I ought to speak. Amen. 
Amen. Thank you, Lord, for that. So, guys, are we going to keep sticking those thorns in our sides? That was something else that I read this morning. We miss the lesson when we pick at the thorn. Right? What are those thorns maybe that we're picking at? Especially right now, today. Because we keep nursing that thorn, bemoaning and cursing it. Yes. Just because God does not remove the thorn doesn't mean that he's not using it for good, to glorify his name. Amen. Amen to that. So again, he is sufficient. He's sufficient in everything and all. Thank you, Jesus, for that reminder. So guys, remind yourselves to just rest in that, to rest in the power of God and not in the wisdom of men. Thank you, Jesus, for that reminder. Thank you, Lord. Woo! I hope that was a blessing to you guys, <laughs> as it was to me. Oh, and here's one of my, these are one of the last earrings from, um, oh, gosh, which one is this one? Morning... Uh, Morning Star Collection. I couldn't even think of which one it was. The Morning Star Collection, if anyone is interested. Um, it is the last pair of earrings. It, you know, I may just keep it if nobody if nobody takes a hold of it. So, <laughs> so yes, please go out there, you guys. Go out there and be a blessing to someone. Show them that grace is enough. Not so much grace, that just Jesus is enough. He is sufficient in everything. Love on others. Show them God's love. It's all about love. I love you guys. I hope you. I hope that was a blessing to you. I love you guys, and I will see you again tomorrow morning on Friday. So, yes, I know that typically I don't do Fridays, but I'm going to be doing Friday mornings as well. So I will see you tomorrow morning. I love you guys. Bye.